From the Sporting News Studios, this is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Matt Litevsky. It's finally over, Eric. Thank God. For us. Man, because we didn't make the playoffs. Feel so good. It really, I feel like a fraud sometimes when I come on this. Why? Stole fantasy football knowledge and... Then I look at my place in the standings in our league. Yeah, it's a tough season, but uh, it's a tough season. You know, sometimes, sometimes as Cordell Stewart once said, sometimes the best team doesn't always win. When did he say that? He said it after the Patriots beat them in oh the first Super Bowl year. Yeah, no one would ever remember that yeah. except the Patriots fan. Well, they kept playing it on the big screen when we raised the banner. <laughs> is that oh, is that right? Yeah, that's kind of funny. After like every first down, they kept well, playing. yeah, no, yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Well. I mean, we are done, but lots of people are still playing. The people who are still playing care more than ever. They sure do, because they're that close to the money. Fantasy playoffs for most people. Uh, Eric Ferrer here, fantasy football expert, officially. <laughs> is that in quotes? Expert. Is that in air quotes? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it is. And we're going to we're gonna run down all the things we normally do. We're going to go over the top trending players of the week. We're going to go over the good and bad matchups, some of the random stuff we saw during last week's games, but we start like we always do by looking at some things we got wrong last week. And the biggest... <laughs> Luckily, it's just some things we got wrong. It's some things, but the biggest is something that's actually not on the sheet. It's our producer, Dustin, was all up in arms before last week. She starred Adrian Peterson or Frank Gore. And both of us were like, oh, Gore. He's the, he's the lead back for the mm-hmm. Dolphins. They have a pretty good matchup. And Adrian Peterson... 90 yard TD runs out sprinting the entire that guy, day. That guy's been averaging less than three yards a carry. Well, what about what his other what about his other eight carries? What about well, right. And then he sure enough has a 90 yard touchdown. Does nothing else the rest of the game. Eight, literally eight carries for eight yards. Eight carries, yards. eight yards, but if a guy gets a 90 yard touchdown, that uh, Yeah, you don't have to give that back. That goes a long way. Yeah, about 90 yards. There's probably a hold on it. Probably. If I had to guess. I was looking for one. Yeah. But anyway, so he was upset. Missed the playoffs. Our fault. Yeah. What are you gonna do? He was so upset that he's not even here today. Yeah, no, he's left. I hit record and walked are, out of the room. We are just, uh, we're un, unsupervised today. Oh, yeah, unlistenable, the whole nine Anything yards. Anything could happen. A couple other things. Two things you got wrong. At least. The big one, Golden Tate. You yeah. just had no time for him. I had no time for him. Because I was like, what are you talking about? Play Golden Tate. Yeah, that, here's the thing. It probably wasn't the most... Um, analytical decision. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't think he has done a lot since he's been with the Eagles in general. No, but he got But I was just kind of sick of him. Right. I was kind of sick fair. of him not doing a ton. So I had a knee-jerk reaction. You were like, I'm going to play David Moore. I'm going yeah. to play... Uh, well, I yeah. well, I did. I did play... I did mistakenly play John Brown over him. Mm-hmm. Who, in my defense, should have had a 51-yard TD if Lamar Jackson could throw it anywhere near him. But, like, you know Lamar Jackson, Jackson can't, can't throw it anywhere near him. Anywhere near him. Yeah, so that was dumb. Um, whatever, he was good. Yeah, I guess he's a bigger part of the offense Matt, now. He lost by, like, 70 anyway. Th- dang, is, that, <laughs> is that how today's going to be? Maybe. Is that how it's going to be? Yeah, right. Maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. Well, I, I had my best game of the year, I think. Maybe not points-wise, but it felt like my best game of the year. Because I had Antonio Brown, had Keenan Allen, and Philip Rivers. Nice little Sunday night comeback that was well, worthless to you. a 70 spot in that yeah. Sunday night game. That's how, like, that's 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 how everyone else felt this year. That's, I mean, that's how I used to it's feel. not how we felt. That's how I used to feel when I played fantasy. Uh, another one, you you totally disregarded <laughs> Derek Carr. You just because I don't care. Because I don't because <laughs> I don't want to play Derek Carr. I don't want to rely on him to be able to put up. A few scores against Kansas City. Now, shockingly, it wasn't garbage time. Right, they were in that game, which I don't know how that happens, but whatever. Proud like, I, I don't want to sit there and play Derek Carr. All right, but I was right. Sure, you were wrong. What were you right about? We had to rank like five quarterbacks, and yeah. I didn't want to play him. <laughs> You just completely were like, what a waste of time yeah. to even discuss them. Yeah, if you sat through that game rooting for David Derek Carr, right. it was a waste or of your David. time. Well, yeah. I was you right. should You should have a better team. I nailed that one, <laughs> even though I'm pretty sure I said Derek Carr was fifth in that whole group. Yeah, a so— A bunch of those guys were worse than him. Uh, one thing, I I said I liked Snead more than Crabtree. Right. Neither did anything. Well, that's Crabtree, not completely true. Well— 
What do you got then? Well, Crabtree had like 30 something yards. <laughs> Ooh. Brown should have had John. Well, we didn't say Brown. Here's the thing yeah. we put them in packing order. You had a problem with my packing order, and my packing order was right. I just said Brown, Sneed, Crabtree. Right, and it was Crabtree, Brown, Sneed. I guess. By targets. And Crabtree did a little. Oh, a little. And Brown, again, should have had that touchdown. Sneed was nowhere sure. to be found. He's pointless. Nah, he, he was, He's pointless with Lamar Jackson. He was fine last week. He was, but he was the only guy Jackson threw to two weeks ago. Three weeks ago now. Three weeks ago now. Yeah. And I told you that was random. Well, yeah, I feel it's all random. And then uh, the other thing, though, one thing we got wrong, too, was every sleeper tight end we mentioned was terrible <laughs> last week. But, you know, it was good. At least Ricky Seals Jones was terrible, so yeah, he didn't. Because no. we joked about how you put you finally got to put him on the bad matchup list, and, then he and this would be the week he would do something. Yep. Good news is he had a RSJ performance of uh, one for ten. He's just not that guy. No, <laughs> he isn't. But yeah, because last week we talked about Br- Brake should have caught a touchdown. He dropped it. Whatever. Uh, Boss Lacoste worthless. <laughs> Kyle Rudolph worthless, and, and CJ Uzum is the new. Uh, Seals Jones. Every week he's got a great matchup. And and then we're like, yeah, no AJ Green. He's going to get more targets or this or that. And every week he does not. He's got less. Ex- I mean, he was at least like a third string tight end. Right. Ricky Seals Jones is supposed to be explosive. athletic and explosive and all that stuff. Yeah. But so, Josh Rosen's probably. So we were, we were we were wrong on a, a good amount of those things. But uh, we're back this week. We'll get we'll get to we the- get so much stuff right this week. I think we will. I really feel good about this week. I'm going to be right about a lot of things. But uh, now we want to go to uh, maybe our fav- favorite segment. It's really only our favorite segment for the name. Right. It's We hit we hit a, a popular search engine. Spoiler alert, it's going to be even better this week. Is it? It's going to be even better. Not the name. I, I don't know what the name is. Oh, and there's a segment within a segment yeah. this week. Yeah, we're really knocking it out of yeah. the park this week. So we're going to go... What, what do you think? Do you have a search engine we should go know. to? I don't I don't have one. This was supposed to be what you're supposed know, to do I before. Um, we can't use Alexa, which I thought of earlier in the year because we used Siri last week. That's right. And I called uh, it Siri. I mean, do we throw... We don't throw the boys over at Google a bone, do we? I think it might be time. Should we save them for the fantasy football like championship? No, or? I think it's time to hit Google. Okay. Because <laughs> we're, we're out of other options. So well, we're we have, not. We have I, just no, for, I just forgot. We have no choice but to, uh, so I'm gonna to get Google super these guys. Lazy. We're actually going to use Google this okay. time. And Google these guys to find the most searched, the highest trending players of the week. And this week... It's pretty easy because there's a bunch of running back injuries. Yeah. It's funny how the timing of that works. Like, it seems like every year, no matter what, right. the playoffs come and random guys are not only on teams, right. but actually playing, scoring points, right. and winning people playoff in, games. In, you know, guys that you would just... Ne- like, I mean, how many people knew Jeff Wilson Jr. was a football player? Oh, I, I definitely had him uh, on my fantasy baseball team because he well, sounds Jeff, like a... you had Jeff Wilson. Uh, Jeff Wilson definitely sounds like a middle reliever. Right, middle 100%. reliever Jeff Wilson. But Jeff Wilson Jr. <laughs> Jeff Wilson Jr. to me sounds like a mid-major college basketball player. Yeah. Does he's, not sound like a starting NFL running he's back. He's lighting up Cuse in the tournament for Kent State. Yeah. <laughs> That's Jeff Wilson Jr. But look, he's a running back for the 49ers, and he had a pretty good game last week. Yeah. And Matt... Breed is finally like you know earliest rule out of the season yeah. for him. It's crazy for anyone. His yeah. his injury patterns this year have been so last odd. Last week was weird. I'd imagine it's super frustrating for people that own him. Yeah, last week was very weird with the yeah he injured his game injured his ankle in pregame warmups. Mm-hmm. And why would he play? Right. And any hope that uh, Breda owners had of maybe grabbing Wilson and waivers this week right. was. Probably dashed if they didn't have a good pick because the rule out came right before waivers even so went through. When does knew, that happen? Everyone knew. Hey, I got to be. It's same with Connor. Yeah. Who we'll get to in a second, but we'll start. We'll start with Wilson Jr. and the Niners and Brita out. The thing I do think people might look at, you know, Wilson's usage, and it was you know like fifteen carries, eight catches. Fifteen carries, sixty-one yards, eight catches, seventy-three yards. Right. A lot of garbage there. I yeah, assume I didn't watch the game, gar- but yeah. they were behind a lot. And watch that game. <laughs> time a running back catches eight for seventy-three, and a big losing effort. It's probably right. Garbage so time. definitely, so that's part of the reason to be you know a little more leery. But the other thing is, Alfred Morris is a healthy scratch. Mm-hmm. He'll probably be active this week. Sure. So. I do think touches are going to go down a little. You certainly can't expect 23 again. And the, the the Broncos are weird because, you know, they had that back-to-back stretch where they gave up 200-yard rushers, Crowell and then Gurley. Since then, 
They've allowed one running back touchdown, zero running back rushing touchdowns, haven't allowed more than 82 rushing yards, and they've played, I mean, David Johnson, Mm -hmm. Melvin Gordon, Joe Mixon, like good running backs. Yeah, I'm not ready to say their defense is like what it used to be, but all of a sudden they're 6-6 and and in the playoff hunt, right? which I don't think a few weeks ago we would have really said that. And the the run defense anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, they lose Chris Harris, which Mm -hmm. hurts the pass defense, but... Who cares for Jeff Wilson Jr.'s sake? Right. It's not a great matchup. It's okay, but it's not great. And then you have these other factors. I think a lot of people are going to obviously pick them up. I think a lot of people are going to put them in their lineups. And I, I don't know. This feels like a trap. Classic. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it might be a trap because he's probably not that good. What? But I, th- I actually think I think the volume. But we, will I be there. I, I don't think he's gonna get thirty touches. But I don't know if if he's gonna get. That I feel volume. like either way he can get twenty touches. I feel, see, if they're in the game, that's way too much to expect. If they're in the game, they'll give him carries. If they're out of the game, he'll get reception. You know, Morris is gonna be part of the passing game. I feel like we've said that before. And then somehow, like, how many times have we been wrong on forty nine? Like, uh, oh, Mostert's getting all the touches, and right? Like, no. But then he did. But then they pro- they proved that they would give it to a nobody. Right. So I think I think I think. But the, not the nobody we expect. 15, 20 touches for Wilson. I don't. I mean, not twenty. I feel like I'm setting it at fifteen. Maybe he goes over, but I'm not super. All right. Confident. How about how about this one? Touches. What about touches plus targets? Twenty. Well, I don't, it gives a well, shit if he gets targets and doesn't well, catch him. Because I think they're either going to be behind <laughs> and they're going right. to throw to him, or if they're in the game, but they're going to be running a little is bit. Is Denver a team that we look at, especially on the road, as just a team that's going to come no. in? And, no. Probably not. So they'll probably be in the game. I guess. I don't know. I'm just not. At first, I was like, oh, yeah, Jeff Wilson Jr., this is this sets mm-hmm. up well for him. And the more I looked at the matchup and everything else, I was like, ah, this, this is a trap. Okay. You play Jeff Wilson Jr.? Well, yeah, you're because not, you're playing Jeff Wilson Jr. But that, it's not that, though. We're talking about him like we actually know but who But that's he because is. of what you said at the beginning of this, where it's like, yeah, every year it's a different yeah. dude, right? So is it going to be him or is it going to be one of these next couple guys? Well, I think it'll be one of the next couple guys. <laughs> Segway that. Right, but every year. So that's why I'm not big on him. And who knows if Breed is ever... I mean, why would he come back at this point? Because he's weird and likes to play on sprained ankles. He's and, a tough guy. But the next guy... Uh, well, James Conner is in the news, but he's already been ruled out. Yep. So essentially, w- replace that with Jalen Samuels. Yep. Who, I mean, I don't, I don't like to just throw around the term game changer. Okay. He's a game changer. Okay. Well, is he a game changer? Because I've got two fun facts about him. Well, and I think the, the most. I know fun you know of one of them. I know he is know why he's a game changer. Is on Yahoo. He qualifies at running back and tight end. My God. Now, it's funny because I starting running back. I tight picked him up. a few weeks ago. I had an extra roster spot, and it was when Connor was a little dinged up a few weeks ago. And I actually picked up Samuels for like a week. Mm-hmm. And we know my team's terrible, but I didn't even notice that. I'm not yeah. like I didn't even notice I could have played him there. Now, I wouldn't have played him there, but it's funny because then I ended up dropping him. And now he could really affect the playoff game as game a tight changer. end. As a tight end. A little Joe, game changer. Like a Joe Webb. Type game changer. If you remember back in the day with remember, Joe Webb, remember Colston, QB, QB wide receiver. Remember Marks Colston? That was, year? I feel like w- that wasn't on a lot of sites though, was it? It was on Yahoo. I know that yeah. much because I had him that year. Yeah. Yahoo, and I was starting Marcus Colston in my tight. Okay, you want to hear the second fun fact? I want to hear it. He hails from Charlotte, North Carolina. Went hey. to Mallard Creek High School right down right the road. Down the road. Yeah. I wonder if we. I wonder if we know him. Went to NC State. We might know him. We might know him. I don't know him, but maybe someone maybe I know knows do, him. Maybe we've seen him. In maybe there's still six, six degrees of, uh, uh, of Jalen uh, Samuels. Samuels. So, what do you, what, what you think about? So, you, you think he's a game changer because he qualifies game as a tight end? Game changer. You think he's going to get more carries than Ridley? Yes. Do you think at least more touches? I mean, I personally look at carries plus targets. That, to me, is the most important stat to look at. Looks. <laughs> Looks. Looks. No, I do think he'll get more touches. Re- but, again, this also could be a trap because they've mm-hmm. already said this is going to be a committee. Okay. And Ridley runs hard, but Ridley runs hard, like, into people and into yeah, concussions. But he's a veteran. Yeah. You know, that I think for the Steelers and the spot they're in, they're, they're a little more likely to trust a veteran. Like, I don't know. I, f- I have a feeling we could be sitting here next week and being like, man, why does Steven Ridley really get 15 touches? Right. So what the, the, the bar still, the bar's a little different if you're playing him at tight end, though, right? Game changer <laughs> if he's a tight end. So I've got, this is a little new segment. Ooh. In uh, week 14. 
<laughs> I've got a user question. What? Yeah. From who? Who listens? Jeremy from Bay Village, Ohio asks, oh, didn't know that was who would you rather have? Uh-huh. Samuels or Wilson? For this week. For this week and a little bit beyond. So he's actually, right. he's in uh, what they call the punishment bowl. Oh. Okay. And uh, he's being offered a trade. Mm. Which I don't, yeah, week trade 14. deadline, kind of no, league no trade deadline week 14. Oh, that seems a little this. shady. But um, so he has, right now, he has Samuels. Right. And I believe uh, Burton, Burton and Hooper are his tight ends. They suck. Yeah. And uh, he's being offered Wilson and either Cortland Sutton or Allen Robinson for Samuels. A two for one? Yeah, do you take, do you take the back in Wilson or do you just... Play Samuels as your tight end. Because who do you think's gonna? Did you get Sutton? I like Sutton. Yeah, I like Sutton a lot. Yeah, so you like well, two for one? Week, I think I do. Who do you like better this week, Wilson or Samuel? Ah, uh, Samuel. But they're both in the they're in the same boat. Yeah, but and then Wilson you but then you a, move one to tight end. Right. But like, is it worth benching? Like okay, let's. Talk. I mean, this is real. It's not, like it's not just for Jeremy, but like, right. if so, you can be like, oh, Jeremy I'm gonna play this. Village. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this guy as a tight end, but that means you have to bench your tight end, right? Right. So like, what number or what type of tight end right. do you take out of your lineup? I mean, now, obviously, Burton's been super disappointing. Yeah, but he's had some I games. I do like the matchup this week. For yeah, him. they're not yeah. great against tight ends. Right. Uh, Hooper. He's do. Hooper is going against Green Bay. Who's good at tight end, good against tight yeah. ends. So I was like, nah, I don't and bother. He's whatever him. anyway. So like, that's the thing. What level of tight end do you take out? I mean, if he's gonna get. If you say Samuel is gonna get. Let's just let's be kind of conservative and say eight carries, three catches. Okay, which is probably conservative, right? Just fifty to sixty yards. That's a lot. That's a high right. average for that's fifty to sixty saying. yards. That's what I'm saying. Like, what's that? That's a high average for for that many carries. Eight for who said? Well, 60 if we yards? said eight for fifty, I said between fifty and sixty yards. That's oh, a lot. Well, you said that. Yeah, I, said I that. didn't. Say okay, that. but let's just say okay. eleven touches. And he gets 50 yards on 11 touches. Yes. That's not... Shocker, we ended up at 50 yards. All right, 60. Well, you were saying rushing. But let's just... Yeah, I mean, that's good for a tight end. Mm-hmm. That's great. So, I, I mean, to me, yeah, he's got to be like a top five tight end. So do you do you bench Burton for him then if he's top I think, five? Oh, yeah. Okay, so who would you rather have? Yeah. Going forward in the punishment bowl, mm. who would you rather have? Who do you, Who's more likely to play more than one week? Wilson is more likely yeah, to play more I think than one so too. week. I don't. I forget their matchups off the top of my head, but yeah. Yeah. So from that standpoint, but yeah, God, that tight end is so, a game so changer. He, so what do you what do you do? What's he? Jeremy from Bay game Village, Ohio, changer. needs to know the answer because you want to know what his punishment is. What? If the loser of the punishment bowl, if to recreate the ESPN the body issue. Uh, yeah. That's I don't a, like that stuff. Such a weird group of guys. I don't like anything that's like permanent. <laughs> yeah. And like those pictures, are <laughs> they're not going anywhere. And uh, I, yeah, I don't like that. I probably yeah, I'd probably keep Samuels then and play him at tight end. All right, all right, Jeremy from Bay Village, do, Ohio. I do like Sutton, but keep yeah. keep Samuels, play him at tight end. Ooh. Figure the rest out. Ooh, that's a tough one. A lot on the line, but I also think Ridley. Ridley's an interesting flex for people who picked him up. I don't think he's terrible. Yeah. It's a great match. I mean, fantastic matchup. It's a little old. Both those guys. Okay. <laughs> Frank Gore's old. Adrian <laughs> Peterson's old. Uh, but great matchup. Both those guys can actually pay off. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, Samuels, man. Game changer. You like trade talk in week 14? I love it. <laughs> I don't, you don't get that in every other podcast. <laughs> no. uh, Melvin Gordon, also in the news. Don't know if he's going to play. I would guess not yeah, because they have a to... week 15 Thursday game against Kansas okay. City. That's yeah. a big game. Right. Playing Cincinnati at home. Not a big game. So. No, he not, most MCL guys need at least two weeks anyway. Think, where's Alex? He can tell us know. all this stuff. Uh, so Gordon, Eckler got, what, 18 touches last week? He got a lot. It was it 21? He had 18 or 21, I think. Wasn't as good as Jackson. At least well, no, it. performance. Yeah. Jackson, but he way out touched him. He mm-hmm. had like 48 total yards, but Jackson on like eight touches had like 85. Uh, he had eight carries for 63 yards. Right, and one catch for 19. Mm-hmm. So whatever that is, 82, and scored the touchdown. Just generally looked better. Yeah. And this week they have the number one matchup oh, a running back in half. It's wonderful when you see at home when you see versus Cincinnati on the in your old Green fantasy lineup versus CIN. So again, I think both are in play. Yeah, I for think sure. Both can be really good, but Jackson. You know, again, because we don't know who's the lead back, how many touches he gets. I think Jackson is, a, a, you know, a number two running back. I think he will get more touches after last week. 
I think they're both going to play a lot. I'm not sure too. San Diego cares about naming a lead back when right. Gordon's not around. Their offense moves the ball. They throw the ball around. I feel like they're just running guys in and out, at least right. at the running back position. I don't then, think they're concerned with with giving one of those guys any more work than the other. And this game feels like a blowout. Mm-hmm. And if so, I think that means a lot of Jackson in the second game half. Game script. Right. A lot of that. So I like them both a lot this week. The question is, like, who do you play Jackson over? You, you say P, uh, solid rule, Eckler in a PPR, maybe Jackson in a standard? I, I think both in standard. Mm. Jackson definitely in standard. Well, I meant over the other. Yeah, probably. <sighs> I don't know. I still feel like you have to sort of default to Eckler as the guy who might get more touches. He has more experience. But then it's like, so, I mean, we get in our good, bad running back matchups, which we have down here. It's like, then it comes down to, like, do you play Jackson over Spencer Ware? Who's playing Baltimore? Tough matchup, but you have to figure gets more touches. Yeah, and Casey's gonna move the ball. Casey, yeah, moves the ball against him, but he wasn't good last week in a great matchup, yeah. and he got that fourth down touchdown by inches. Yeah, I mean, he was that close to being a complete bust. Yeah, uh, that's tough to do for a, a running back who might get eight touches, but love the matchup, and I think he'll do well. Uh, another guy, another banged up running back. Chris Carson. We're back to uh, we, we've these, had a nice break. A-holes. Haven't we had a nice break taken ta- taken from picking Seattle running backs? I, I thought so we much. were done. I thought we had put that away. And another situation and, where right away, you know, he whatever dislocates his finger, and Pete Carroll like the next day is like, I think he'll be fine. Yeah. Like I hate that he answered that so quick. Yeah. That tells me he's just I, God, making stuff. I thought up. I honest. I thought we were done talking Seattle. We're never done. And here's the big question for that. So, because like Penny looks okay now. The best part about that, they played Monday night. Yep. Against a, it's a, in a really bad matchup. Yep. Vikings. It's the Vikings. They just pretty much not shut down Sony Michelle, but they definitely held him in check. Yeah. And the return of Rex Burkhead. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've all been waiting for that. We have. So, Carson, I just feel like keep him out of your lineups now. Even, I mean, if he's questionable at all going into the weekend. Yeah, because you cannot trust. Seattle. And then the question is... You can't trust them to tell the truth about injuries. You can't trust them to split their carries the way you want them to split their carries. That's the other big thing. So lately, it's felt like, well, Penny's the guy, right, if Carson's out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Would you be surprised one bit (laughs) if Carson's out and Mike Davis gets 18 touches? No. Because, you know... Because it's stupid Seattle. Right, and the game where Penny sort of had his breakout game against the Rams when Carson was out... Davis was the starter yeah. and the lead back, and then Penny got a little bit hot, and they just stuck with yeah. him. How's his pass pro looking? I, it's a good question. I mean, we know Aaron Jones struggles in that. Do you, have pass, Williams. do you have pass pro rankings on the site? I wish. Man, you got to get those up. That's something we need to get into. Rookie right here. rookie and second year pass pro running back Our rankings. How's the blitz pick up? Yeah. Yeah. So, You're so lazy. I don't know why I don't just do that. I'm going to start doing that. I just don't know. I don't. I, you, I don't think you can trust or play any no, of these. I three. don't want to. Bad match. I'm not listening. Bad everything. I'm not playing any of them this weekend. Good. How about you? Nope. <laughs> play Ridley over him. The Riddler. Play Jackson over him. Riddler. I'd even play Jeff Wilson Jr. over him. Maybe not Morris, but the rest of those guys. Just forget mm-hmm. about. It. Pretend the Seahawks running back <laughs> don't exist. Backfield doesn't exist. All right. Last guy. I want to talk about Josh Allen. He's a little he's a little secret, Josh Allen. Look, as much as we sit here and talk about Lamar Jackson and go on and on about we, we his— We talk about Lamar Jackson? We talk about him way too much. Did I talk about him last yes. week? Yes. <laughs> as much as we talk about him and his running and his high floor, mm-hmm. Allen's doing it and doing it better. Yeah. 99 yards. 100 yards. Two uh, weeks ago, 135. Yeah. And he had, he had 101 two weeks ago, two kneel downs, yeah. brought him back under 100. Yeah. I'm think? calling him 200-yard games. Yeah, let's do it. It's big, though, in DraftKings. You know, DraftKings is a three-point bonus, bonus for 100 yards. Yeah. I always hated that in fantasy. Yeah, I, I don't like bonus leagues. 40-yard yeah. you, you got to bonuses. a round number, so that right. makes you better. Oh, 39-yard touchdown run yeah. is, isn't worth Garbage. anything extra. But 40, come on, grow up. The Josh Allen thing is weird because, like, I don't know how much Buffalo Bills football you watch on Sundays. A lot. Um, it's it's ugly. Yeah. It's real ugly. Mm-hmm. But he gets 100 yards rushing every game. I mean, only nine carries last time. It's not like they're running a Throws lot. Throws it around a little bit. For him. Yeah, right. like it's really ugly. And last week, you know, I think he had two touchdown passes. Or was it one and one? Either way, he had two touchdowns. And he should have had a third. Like that last play of the game, he had a receiver yeah. wide open in the yeah. end zone. He underthrew him. Charles Clay's a little slow. Couldn't quite get back. Right. Well, they, they just released Holmes and Benjamin. Right. Like Benjamin, man. How fast is he falling? Run your mouth, man. You don't cross Cam Newton. Um. 
But yeah, Allen is ugly, but he gets it done and probably yes, better so. than and I mean better this, fancy player than Lamar Jackson. We always say right high floor. That's why we yeah. like Jack, high floor. I, I now to be fair, like he, he before these last two games, I don't think he had had more than like forty rushing yards. Mm-hmm. He had had some good like against the Vikings. Yeah. He had had some good performances running, but I mean he's not a running court. Like I don't think they they designed many running. No, but plays he for takes him. off like from what I've right. seen, he takes off the second he doesn't quick, see anything, and he's yeah. good at it. And uh, yeah, he's, the, I mean they're playing the Jets this week. They're not good. You want to talk about dumb games? Right. This could be. I don't want to call this game a shootout, right? But I feel like this game could end up easily in the twenties. Just two just a weird, stupid, bad yeah. teams. No There's going to be turnovers and some yeah. cheap touchdowns. Yeah, like I wouldn't be su- surprised if it was thirty to right twenty seven. And I know or next week they have the Lions, which is a pretty good matchup. And then I think that week sixteen is a pretty good one too. I mean, it, look, if you're in the fantasy playoffs, you probably have a yeah, you pretty probably good do quarterback. Better. You probably do better. You don't need to really think about him. But it is interesting. Two quarterback leagues. I mean, there's the old two QB, <laughs> and there is a point where you have. it's all about the matchups. And I don't know. Maybe he's got a higher floor. Like, if that's if you're, the rest of your team is stacked, like if you got Jeff Wilson Jr. and Jalen Samuels, <laughs> and you're not worried about running back, maybe that think, high I mean, floor. These, these running something. quarterbacks are... Their, their floors are interesting because right. they throw up 70 rushing yards. Yeah, and, it's huge. you know, that's an extra TD. Right. And they don't have to, you know, like I've been trying to say, they don't have to do much right. to get to, I know no one, 20, no right. one wants to win, no one's going to really win with 20, Right. but you got to get to 20 before you get right. to like 30. I mean, you look at, I mean, just the thing, now look, you're never going to play Josh Allen over Drew Brees, but it's like you look at what Drew Brees did last week, total flop. Just killed his his owners, right? In a huge week where maybe they were going for a regular season crown or something like that. Yeah, you're not going to play him over Breeze or I mean, at this point though, what's Brady done over well, the could, past could month? Could be someone like a what's Rogers like, done like over a the past like month? a Wentz or it went, I mean, we're going to get to him another bad match. A Watson, for him. depending on the week, or. right? And uh, God, though, I mean, you just can't, right? Week 14, 15, you're playing Josh Allen. <laughs> It's tough, but you know we've. That's seen, what winners do, though. I we've feel. seen, yeah. we've seen fantasy championships right. won with stuff Absolutely. like that. It's weird, weird stuff. All right, well, let's get in then to the quarterback. Good and bad matchups, not sleepers, bust, not start sit, just good and bad matchups. We're talking out loud here, and uh, so quarterback. We we've complained about quarterback all year, mm-hmm. trying to say who's who's sleeper, who's a bust. Back when we did that, I know last week, last week, you know, our good. Didn't all hit by any stretch, mm-hmm. but I felt our bad. We highlighted Rodgers, Brady, and mm-hmm. Mayfield. Nailed it. It's funny. Rodgers didn't even, I was, you know, throwing around the, oh, right. he'll get his 250 and two. Didn't he didn't that. even get that. Yeah. He didn't even and get Brady that. Brady just doesn't, doesn't do anything. And he's a game manager. Yeah. Back to rookie Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> Managing yeah. games. Too. At least the Patriots are winning the Packers. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah. But, like, what's going to happen in Green? Like, do you think some. We're not going to talk about Rodgers, but I guess we can for a second. Uh, can. What's going to happen there with McCarthy out? Like, do you think it's going to be a quick jolt of offense no. or nothing through the end of the year and then I mean, kind of like, like restructuring some things yeah. next year? Like, how was he? I, I just always look at that, when, especially with a quarterback like Rodgers. Was McCarthy like really holding him back? Like, well, I mean, it might just be an attitude. Here's the thing: if you're Rodgers, like, do you still think if you put Rodgers on any team, he's right. the best quarterback in the league? Yeah, I think so. So he's looking around at silly season, right? He sees what the Rams are doing, right. sees what the Chiefs are doing. Do you think he's like, I'm better than these guys? Right. Why isn't our fen- Why isn't our offense? Yeah. Why don't we have players we can put in? Like, I mean, well, even that's think, the thing: they don't have players. But even think, but think about. The Rams friends. Yes, right. Gurley, awesome. Right. Right? Ro- I mean, Robert Woods, he's been real good. Yeah, but like, that's, he's, he's one of those dudes. He's a guy you can get, right? Feels that and way. And like, yeah, they traded for Cooks. Like, you know, Cup right. was a late round draft pick or whatever. Right. He's been good. These guys have been good. I mean, even, even look, I mean, even look in Minnesota, like mm-hmm. Thielen. Like, he's been amazing. Guy was an undrafted free agent. Minnesota. Um, Born and bred. You know, the guys in, the guys in, um, in Kansas City, Kelsey's mm-hmm. awesome. Hill's awesome, but where'd Hill come from? Right. Well, Hill had the personal things that kind of held him back in the draft. But I'm just yeah. saying, like, he Rogers got to be looking around at yeah, some sure. of these numbers that well guys are putting up. How, Even the Bears, like Trubisky's throwing it around. You how know about I mean? this? How about this? Maybe Rogers isn't the best quarterback. Maybe he's not. 
Maybe he's not. But maybe he's not. Like, when he's out there doing his thing, though, it's also pretty good. Similar. Why isn't Matt Ryan putting up silly season numbers? He did, like, I feel like he did last year, the year before. And year before yeah. last year. And he, again, we go, it was all offensive coordinator. You know what's funny, Shanahan too? I, I don't know. Sark and- I don't know what the stats are. I remember, I feel like we've talked about, not here, but in life, the red zone turnovers <laughs> of, of yeah. Atlanta and how they would just right. turn the ball over. And I want to say a week or two ago, I want to say they had, like, the second least turnovers mm-hmm. in the league. Yeah. So they've like changed that, but maybe they got conservative. I don't and know. And now like they're not turning the ball over, but their offense isn't as good as it was. I feel like they run even less. Like they used to well, run all the time. Well, they don't have Freeman time. anymore. Maybe yeah. Freeman was. A- Ugh. But anyway, we don't need to talk about him. He's he's irrelevant. Uh, but the good you, ones. You brought him up. What's that? You brought Matt Ryan up. Well, that's true. I did. You brought up Rodgers, though. That started this whole thing. The, uh, the quarterbacks that have good matchups who might be on your bubble, Jameis Winston. Mm-hmm. At home, against frequent. He's New a Orleans. frequent. Uh, he's always, yeah. He's the, he's a bubble guy always. And Lamar Jackson, yeah. your boy at the Chiefs. Yeah. Baker Mayfield, back at home against the Panthers, and uh, Mitch Trubisky if he's back at home against the Rams. Uh, rank those four. Um, I had Trubisky one, but I'm gonna go Winston one, mm. just because he does see even with a couple turnovers. Yeah. He seems to do it every week, and they haven't turned it over. New Orleans is, good, is a decent or, defense. He hasn't thrown picks, but yeah. I still can't like you. Still get that feeling that New Orleans scores so much that they give the ball back. Right. There's points to be had for Winston. It's at home, so I'm gonna go Winston. I'm gonna go Trubisky two in a shootout against the Rams. I know that he may not a shootout. The Bears don't really shoot out, but prime time, cold Chicago game, but. He's yeah. back, which I don't love the fact that he's coming off injury, but I just think they're going to have to keep up with the Rams to some right. degree. And then I'll go Mayfield at home versus Carolina. And my boy, mm. I'm going with Lamar in the four spot this week. Yeah. I would he's got Kansas four. City, which is like uh, Derek Carr just did some things. On, like they That's don't right. play good D. But I really, I lost a little bit for Jackson last week. Yeah. With the, like... I feel like He's his throwing is like it's, turf, like, it's like regressed. Well, he missed yeah. almost a quarter of action, I feel right. like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but his throw, like, I really thought, I thought if anything, he'd have a lot of trouble with the shorter throws, mm-hmm. but he'd hit some big ones here and there. Right. And I'm not saying he's Mr. Accurate, but he, he's doing some things short. They ran some misdirection stuff. He's throwing across mm-hmm. his body, which isn't really a great idea, but he's not hitting anything long. Mm-hmm. Like that John Brown touchdown or a potential touchdown, it was so wide. Oh, you can't right. miss that. Right. So he, I've kind of lost it a little bit for him throwing the ball. Yeah, same. I, I put I put Winston one. I put Mayfield ahead of Trubisky. I think he's going to – they're going to bounce back. Like, that was such a, a setup for them because they had had all these great matchups and they are rolling. Then you go to a really good team on the road. And, you know, he threw for a ton of yards. But through the three picks, so the numbers were sort of whatever. I, Carolina, man, you talk about a reeling defense. They're Re- a reeling team. Well, the whole team, Cam. We'll talk about Cam later and his can't throw at 50 yards. But that, it, that was a weird one. So they're completely, I don't know, they're bad. Like they're a bad defense at this point. Like they're, I think they're top five in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. So I like Mayfield a lot this week. Ron Rivera's taking over defensive play calling, though. Yeah, great. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and Winston, yeah, they just find a way. Like, the fact that, you know, what the the Bucs did, or Fitzpatrick did to the Saints week one, I think is irrelevant at this point. But, uh, yeah, they find a way. But you want to talk an easy 250 and two. I mean, that's Winston, I feel like. Yeah, it's there. So the bad, Goff at Chicago, Stafford. I think Stafford at this point is like, you don't. Really I feel like there's no him. real reason to start that. Right, he hasn't been doing well this week. Statistically, it's a tough one uh, at Arizona. Wentz at Dallas. I, don't, I still don't know what to do with him. And then I only put Andrew Luck in here just because of the shutout last week. That was weird too. I don't know where that. The came guy from. who had been on the three touchdown streak right. looked like one of the best quarterbacks. We've in the league said again. like multiple times, Jacksonville. We right. Have, we assume they think their season's over. I mean, their up. season is over, but right. they're not kind of giving up. But I don't know what they're doing. We can all agree, right? Maybe so, they just wanted to win one without without Fournette. Maybe. Maybe they hate him. Maybe they might. Yeah, throwing punches. But at this point, luck. I mean, you still got to play him. Right? I feel like you got to play him. Tough I feel like there's, there's potential. Houston, sh- there's potential shootout potential in that one. Maybe inside against Houston. You know, Houston can put points up too. I know their yeah. D's been good, but they're weird. I could see things getting a little silly in that game. Me, I could also see that being like a 13-10. I really feel that game could go either mm-hmm. way. But yeah, so I think you still have to start luck. Goff to me is the tough one. How's the weather in Chicago? I mean, Chicago in December. How do you think it is? I don't know. Did you look it up? 
No, but I know enough. <laughs> I'm just gonna to assume know. it's a blizzard. It's not. Well, no, not a blizzard. I I assume it's a blizzard in Buffalo okay. in December. Okay, which is not windy in Chicago. Cold. Yeah, and it's a night game. Can Goff handle that, California, California kid. California dude. I don't know. Can you bench him though? Yeah, I think he can. Okay. He's been up and down. I mean, we know that they'll give it to Gurley. The thing with Goff is, is that there's a good chance you have Goff and another good quarterback. I Probably. Feel like yeah, you drafted him. If, if Goff's your quarterback, you have someone else. You drafted like him might. with someone else. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I'm not very high on him. Again, it comes down to would I play Winston over him? I think I would. Would I play Mayfield over him? I think I would. But I don't know. You like Trubisky more than Mayfield. Yeah, well, I just feel like that game, they, they might need some... Some points there, but what do I know, man? I'm on by this week. <laughs> Is that what we're calling <laughs> I'm on, it? Yeah, I'm on by until next September. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Just really focusing on next season, trying to yeah. get healthy? Yeah, I'm getting my keepers in order. <laughs> I'm in the, I got that big consolation bracket oh, matchup. God. I can't play consolation brackets. By the way, let's get into this, too. I right, should have started it. with this. What about these a-holes who are eliminated from the playoffs and still make waiver claims? That's super lame. Now, like, they, you should lock teams that aren't in the playoffs, I, unless there is like a punishment right. bowl. But oh, still, okay. So I think that you, your league needs to determine: does your little consolation bracket mean anything? Yeah. If and it then, doesn't, I don't think it should. I don't think it should either. And if yeah. it, even if it does, right? Even if it does, unless the punishment is so horrible, those people should be off waivers, right? So that the big boys can play. Now, even if it doesn't mean anything, if you want to do some free, at least to give it a day yeah. before you do. If free you want to do some free agent stuff because yeah. for some reason you want to play for some pride or have <laughs> yeah. a side bet with someone right. in your league, maybe like. Okay, but don't mess with waivers, man. Mm-hmm. That's super. I wasn't lame. even doing it at the end of the year in our league when I knew I wasn't going to make the playoffs. Yeah, and you know, theoretically, I still set my lineup. I made free agent mm-hmm. moves, but I was like, I don't want to get like a guy like Gus Edwards permanently. Right. But those still matter because I was playing people who right. were jockeying for position. So you could argue that I still should have. But I was like, man, I'm not gonna. Because me and you are classy owners, God, man. We really are. We are great. Wentz. Tough matchup at Dallas. Yeah, Dallas T, man. He 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 finds a way to get numbers. At yeah, the end of games. we're just gonna keep adding these guys to get two fifty and two every week. But are they? Uh, but uh, like, I mean, second. Dallas just shut down New Orleans. Yeah, like there might not be two in there. It might not be. You know, might and he hasn't been great. No, Dallas I, is linebackers, I think he's on man. the bench too. Yeah, all of a sudden Dallas is feisty. Yeah, legit. But so I think Wentz is on the bench. I probably of that group, I put Luck one, Goff two, Wentz three, Stafford four, but. It's close. Co-sign that. All right. Running backs. Good. Lions, we don't know what's happening with Carry on Johnson yet, but they're playing one of the best matchups running backs can have at Arizona. Uh, Mark Ingram, who's really struggled two straight games, but he's at Tampa. The Patriots guys, including Rex Burkhead, are at Miami, and then the Bills and Jets against each other. Mm-hmm. This is the only game all year Shady has had 100 yards or or scored against the Jets in week 10, week 9, whatever week it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Jets, I thought was real interesting last week. We've been, I, or at least I've been talking up Elijah McGuire. Hey, he's going to take touches, this and that. Crowell comes out in a tough matchup. Twenty-one carries, ninety-eight yards, had five targets. He looks fast. Yeah, I don't know what happened. He actually looked fast on TV. Right. So, uh, to me, but McCoy and Crowell are both solid number two running backs. Good matchups against Man, each I'm other. I'm so gun shy with McCoy at this point. I get it. So I get gun shy. It. Can but we call gets, him RB3s or flexes? I mean, he gets 18 touches a game. Yeah, and he turns them into a, 45 yards. Because Josh Allen takes all the all the good holes. I know. Josh Allen picks his spots. But I don't know. I, I feel fine playing both those guys. I feel good about Michelle and White. I do think that Rex Burkhead is a thorn in Michelle owner's sides. A little. I don't think. I'd be annoyed I, if I owned Michelle. I'll put it that if way. If Burkhead wasn't out... Three quarters of the season, maybe it's well, the. Well, he pa- had seven carries last it's week. It's the Patriots. So I feel like he'd probably get hurt. Well, sure, but that's. I'm just saying, even at like six carries, it's enough to annoy you. They're giving the ball to Michelle a lot, though. Well, they did. They're giving the ball a lot. Right. We'll see what shakes but out around the goal to line. Run out a lead. Well, yeah, they're probably gonna. Have, you don't think they're gonna have a lead against Miami? Isn't my isn't at Miami? I know. Like it's like the Patriots Brady's house Chris of horrors. I, yeah. yeah, it's not quite a house of horrors, but like things don't go well. <laughs> yeah, it's there. a weird thing. It's a weird thing there, but um, I I would say out of these guys, I still probably like Michelle first. Right. Um, let's say Ingram second. Right. 
let's say McCoy, McCoy. Ah, you know what? Let's say Blunt third. Right. Assuming Johnson. Doesn't Assuming play. Johnson. Let's say Blunt right. third. Then let's go. And McC- then let's go McCoy crawl. Yeah. What do you think? No, I, I probably agree. I mean, I, I would take I take Ingram first. I think he's going to have a bounce back. You know, I, we always do the so-and-so isn't the type of guy who scores three games in a row, right. like a David Moore type. Ingram's not the type of guy who has three bad games in a right. row. Do you think the Especially Saints, against Tampa. Who's the Saints' um, grass, grass back? Oh, Ingram. Is it Ingram? Okay. 100%. All right. I, I, do you know it gets a little sloppy down there in Tampa? Absolutely. I mean, in December, yeah. I assume it's raining. <laughs> I don't need to check. Uh, and, yeah, I do like LeGarrette Blunt. You know, he really got rolling last week. And was it, <laughs> no, he did. Let me finish. No, it's just I don't. <laughs> never heard that before. No, the blunt got rolling. Oh, nice. You don't even know how funny you are. God, I'm good. Blunt got rolling last week, <laughs> and then Stafford had that horrible fumble. And I really feel like if that didn't happen, like that was a blunt drive, man. He was killing it, and uh, it's blunt, isn't it? Well, but anyway, for our purposes today, yeah. it's blunt. So I, I don't know. I like him. I, I mean, I like all these backs. I mean, they have good matchups. That's yeah. why they're on here. I like them all. There's not one that I'm nervous about, and I think that they should be pretty safely in the RB two. Well, especially discussion. with all the injuries right. from the exactly filling guys. These yeah, guys, you want to start all these guys, guys over solid Jeff in, Wilson in, in Jr. And Jalen, I mean, Jalen Sam was a game changer at tight end, end. but at running back, I'm certain all these guys ahead of him. Then the bad matchup, Spencer Ware, the Titans guys, which is weird because it looks like Derrick Henry's back to be in the lead. He sucks. Listen, let's just, let's just ink the Titans into a bad matchup. Right. They're not Josh Adams. Uh, he plays Dallas. Uh, the, the Titans play Jacksonville. Ware plays Baltimore. Marlon Mack, who's really mm, a little step He's back. He's up and down. He's up and down. At Houston. And then uh, your boy, Doug Farton, at home against <laughs> Pittsburgh. I mean, so Adams is the one, Adams and Ware, but Adams has spent 20 and 22 carries the Get last two A lot two of weeks. volume. Playing well, but. Dallas is a good D, but. Brutal I mean, matchup. Certainly can see Philly obviously moving the ball at some point, getting right. inside the five, and he looked really bad on his uh, goal line carries. Right. Um, was that Monday night or Sunday night? Monday night. Monday night. Um, although the, although the, fourth, the fourth down one, he had no chance. Yeah. I, I don't think that was his fault. Yeah. Um, but you know, Sproles is back now. That's the thing because Adam's still giving to, Clement the ball in New Orleans. You know, he had he had six targets. Now they were losing that game, but even early in the game, he was in in the receiving you know downs. Now he he's had one target the last two weeks. It's I, honestly, I think he's touchdown or bust well, because I don't think he's getting twenty carries this game. And, yeah, I mean, it's weird to say he's touchdown or bust when he gets that kind of volume, well, right? But um, that's if you bank on that volume, which I really don't. Yeah. Not in this matchup, but he's still a guy that you almost have to play as like at least like a high flex yeah. RB two. But I don't like him this week. Out of these five, though, I like where the most out of these five. Yeah, cause just because their offense, yeah. they're at home against Baltimore. I know Baltimore City's been really good lately, but again, you got to assume Kansas City is going to move the ball. Where you know they'll throw he, screen yeah, passes, he can catch the ball, he can catch the ball. You got to think that Doug Farton some... had like sixty and a touchdown on the road against Baltimore. So I, to me, that's where. Yeah, I mean, I'm can do that. Mac's a weird one. Mac either looks real good or real bad. So his worst games were both against the Jags. So maybe that's something. And you know, but Houston's a good defense too. Yeah. And they, yeah, he definitely seems to have lost a lot of his shine. Yeah, I, I don't love, I don't love Martin against Pittsburgh either. Like no. he seems to be getting his fifty and a touch every week. But again, if he doesn't get the touchdown, if they get behind, you're going to Rashard. Right. Um, and then Lewis is the guy who really has fallen from grace. Yeah. Just doesn't look good as a run. I feel like he always has that big receiving game in him. But we haven't seen it lately. Uh, like some of the stuff I've seen from them, though, like on the throws to him, yeah, they're not like. Great, or they're not leading them, or like so. No, they're not oh. like great screen pass setups, yeah. or like oh, everyone just blitzed and they threw it. Like they're just they're they're like really mm-hmm. pointless kind of targets, right? So he doesn't even have a chance to get yeah. out. Yeah, I don't think I'd start either. I, I guess I'd still start Lewis and PPR, like you have to. Yeah, but I don't I don't like either of them in standard. I don't I don't like Martin in standard. Mac Adams and Ware get the ball enough. Yeah, you're starting them at least flexes, but that's one where I might start. I don't know. Would I start Wilson Jr. ahead of him? I don't know. I'd probably start Justin Jackson ahead of some of them. I think you can start those guys. I think you can start both of those guys over the Titans. Yeah. I think you— For sure. I think you could—I think you can easily make a case over Martin. Yeah. 
I think Adams, Mack, and Ware get a little dicey. Right. Yeah, it's a tough call. Yeah, volume matters. All right, wide receivers. Got a bunch here. The Bucks secondary guys of good matchups against New Orleans. Cortland Sutton finally got, you know, did what he was supposed to do a month ago last week. Now he's got the Niners. Zay Jones, only game in town. Yeah, I don't trust against him the much Jets. At all. The Bears guys against the Rams, although keep Tlaib's back now, so that sort of when you look at the overall stats, factor that in. Trey Burton game now? Could be. Guy who's had you know had one target last week and Adam Shaheen caught a touchdown. Uh the Jags which I, I don't want to talk about the Jags receivers, yeah. but it is a great matchup on paper. But yeah, forget them. Uh bad matchups. Eagles guys against Dallas, mm-hmm. even though Golden Tate's a must start. We've already seen <laughs> Golden Tate kill Dallas once this year. Yeah. He was with the Lions, but so what? Uh, Doug Baldwin against Minnesota. John Ross, number two receiver, red zone threat John Ross against the Chargers. And then this guy, Devontae Parker. This guy? Why is he this guy? Because he sucks. Yeah. And he does, like, I couldn't believe it. You know, he he, he caught a touchdown. He had like four or seven targets, 40 some yards, and a touchdown, right? And then I go on, like, Yahoo, just, you know how Yahoo has, like, the banner stuff when you just go to their Mm -hmm. scoreboard? Mm -hmm. And it was like, I forget exactly what it said, but it was like, you know, week four, early fantasy pickups. Can you trust Parker? Mm -hmm. I was like, of all the guys to highlight in a week where all these running backs got hurt and stuff, you highlight a proven boner of a receiver. (laughs) I don't get that. It's funny, too. I, I see those Yahoo kind of headlines. Yeah. And, like, sometimes they stay up way too long. Oh, yeah. Like, it's days later, and you're like, this Well, I think it's anymore. a weird thing with caching. Caching? caching? <laughs> on your computer, <laughs> where it's like... Uh, caching. <laughs> caching. It's a weird <laughs> thing, where it's like, if you don't, like, click out of the page or, so, or yeah, something. Yeah, it could be. But anyway... If only I knew anyone in product who could answer questions like that. But do you? No. <laughs> Do you know about caching and product? <laughs> caching. Yahoo yes. caching? Yeah, I uh, do. So, yeah, so uh, <laughs> so I just think he's a... <laughs> caching. I, I, has anyone ever said clear your cache? I think someone has. No one said There was it. times when people didn't know how stuff was pronounced, like GIF and JIF. Yeah, I still and don't know those. Meme and, you know, remember when memes yeah. started? I don't people, know. Like, is it GIF or JIF? Meme? Oh, bad. I think it's either. Is it okay to say either? What? GIF or JIF? I mean, I think so, yeah. Okay. I mean, keep saying both. some people have strong opinions. Those people are losers. What about, a, what about if, Brita and Brida? Well, right. That's <laughs> a, but, I mean, if you have a strong opinion about GIF and JIF, then you're, I don't, yeah. I don't want to have a probably conversation probably spend too much you. time on the internet. Maybe yeah. you should go out But, like, I remember with memes, and it was like, a meme A memes? mem? Mm-hmm. Is that a mem? Cache and cash, same thing. No one ever said cache. I've said cache. <laughs> you. Yeah. You also said Surrey when you were asking Siri last yeah. week. Yeah. Wow, what can I say? I'm a big Katie Holmes fan. But so Parker, I, people look at that and be like, hey, New England, shootout. They're going to have to throw. They'll be behind. A, maybe, maybe not. And B, so what? And if Danny Amendola is back especially. Danny Amendola revenge game? Well, no, just Danny Amendola, a guy who gets targets for the Dolphins. Danny playoffs Amendola? That is his name, his super clever, (laughs) catchy name. So just please don't waste your time with Devontae Parker. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of kind of throw in don't waste your time with John Ross. But he always catches touchdowns. Yeah, on the road. Jeff Driscoll on the road. Now, that is a game where I'm like, they're going to throw a lot to catch up. I guess, but Jeff Driscoll on the road. I don't blame you. No, he really has. He catches like two passes I'm not game. super excited about I mean, these are bad matchups. Right. We're not so it's not a so. touchdown. I, again, I don't yeah. I don't think Doug Baldwin is is very startable these days. But Russell Wilson always throws three touchdowns. He does. Throw three even three though he touchdowns. throws the ball 15 times a game. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what happens there? Is this going to be like luck where we uh, just go half to start and he always throws three touchdowns and then he has a crap game? Yeah, I don't know. We said that about, oh, well, I said that about Atlanta last week. I was like, right. but how bad is that matchup really? Right. I'm like, they're still going to get 21, maybe 24 right. points. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. But, yeah, I mean, Lockett at this point is a must start. And that's really, it's crazy for a quarterback who's so good and throws three touchdowns every week. You only want to play one of his receivers. Somehow, it's someone weird will catch yeah. one. Yeah. You know, uh, Ed Dixon or you know, Van Ed or whatever. So the Eagles, this is the big one I think is, is Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, talk about a guy who's disappeared. Yeah. After a really hot start when he came back hurt or from injury, do you start him against Dallas? Is he I, such a name that you no, just No, I have think to? you can look elsewhere because I, I don't even think, too. you know, I think he's. 
wide receiver three material anyway. Even right. on his best weeks this year, he probably was wide receiver two. We never called him a one. Well, I mean, he, he had one week. So if we yeah. drop him to a three, then he doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be played. Right. There's so other guys the other guys like, look at. Like a Chris Godwin or an Adam Humphrey. Humphrey has been hot. Yeah. That, Godwin just had a good game. It's pretty tough to sit driver for those guys. But, right. I mean, it's a shootout, and Winston throws his two, three TDs every, every week. Every week? Sutton. I really like him. I love him this week. I think 49ers, third most fantasy points to receivers. Yeah, they like but, to let teams shoot but out with them. Opposite, right? Case Keenum throws one touchdown every yeah. week. Like, he doesn't throw. But he throws for 300 yards every week, I uh, Yeah, like. but so then it's like, well, is Sutton really better than Sanders? I don't I don't know. Like, by no means he a must A little tougher to play Sutton over Jeffrey, but yeah, I and could see it against I'm with you on Zay Jones. I think, you know, two weeks ago he had one target, no catches. This week he has a big game. I, hey, he might be the only show in town, but... <laughs> He's Zay Jones. He hasn't been yeah. anything special. He's that. He's that. He's what, basically Devontae Parker. As much as we talked about McCoy mm-hmm. having 45 yards, it wouldn't shock me if in this game McCoy and Allen and Chris Ivory scored all the touchdowns right, and sure. they ran for 250. Well, this yards. is the week the rando tight end. Or yeah, they, they throw these weird passes. I wouldn't. To I wouldn't stake my playoff hopes nah, on no Zay chance. Jones. All right, the Bears guys. Now none of these guys. You know, Allen Robinson's been down a little bit lately. Gabriel gets catches, but that, you know, every once in a while, Anthony Miller pops up. But it's a good matchup, even with Tlaib back. I think you got to start Robinson. I feel like if the weather's good, all right, if the weather's okay, if it's dry. It's Chicago in December, bro. Okay, maybe we should look it up. Maybe there's well, any chance you guys will write an article on the I weather? Don't think, well, we do every <laughs> Sunday morning, but as I've told people, do not read that article. If it's, if it's dry, I think the Bears receivers are startable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's dry. I mean, Gabriel, whatever, you don't have to start PPR, him. PPR, he's not bad. But yeah. I mean, Miller seems like he's kind of part yeah. of the offense, but uh-huh. I think it's a Trey Burton game. Let me, throw that, let me throw that out there. Well, and I mean, look, the guy who's just been the guy is Tariq Cohen. I mean, yeah. I, I mean he gets targeted in the red zone yeah. all the time. He's throwing TDs. Yeah, just everything. Yeah. Uh, so I like Robinson, but not really the other guys. And like I said, we're not talking about the Jags. So is Adam Humphreys one of these? Adam Humphreys doesn't catch a TD in three straight games. <laughs> I don't know. Like He's been consistent. It's Tampa in silly season against New Orleans. Yeah. I, it, and again, I don't know how much it matters, but when they played in week one, everyone. What's the total on that game? It's got to be over like 50, 50, right? 54? Yeah. 56? Yeah. So again, there's going to be TDs. They, they, don't have a good, they don't have a good running game. And we Peyton know Barber's coming through but lately, we, though. But, 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 but what did you say last week about Peyton Barber? When he plays a good run defense. Right, but then he had a good game last week. He usually week. doesn't do anything. Then he did have a good game. New Orleans going to be a little mad. Damn near had two touchdowns last week. But he New Orleans coming line. off the mini bye. Well, mini buys are huge. Embarrassing, not embarrassing loss, but it's kind of a double mini buy because they played Thursday, Thursday. Uh, I don't think it works that way. I think it does. How is it a double mini buy? They had seven days in between their last two games, Still. and now they have the mini buy. But you have to take total days in which it's been two games. No, that's not a thing. That's how it works. Uh, they're probably check your cage, bro. They're probably a little upset mm-hmm. over uh, oh, just mad over that Dallas just loss. Stewing defense might be. Uh, it might be a little uptick, but mm-hmm. it's at Tampa. So I Yeah, know. I think you're starting Humphreys, and I think you're starting Godwin. I wouldn't feel great about it, though. I don't think what, because obviously Evans is a must start. I don't think all three have good games. That seems to be, again, except for week one, they generally not all three do, but yeah. you know, try to pick the right one. I don't well, know. I put Godwin ahead of Humphreys. But yeah, I would too. I just think he's better. Yeah. But that maybe is dependent on if Jackson's out. If he yeah. plays, that throws everything. Into chaos. Tight ends. We'll go over them quick. Good matchups. Vance McDonald at Oakland. David Njoku versus Carolina. Thunder Dan Arnold at Tampa. Antonio Gates versus Cincinnati. And then Trey Burton. We already talked about him against the Rams. Uh, you know, it's tight end. I think Njoku should be in everyone's lineup, even though he comes and goes. Carolina's played like three straight teams that don't use tight ends. Mm-hmm. Or two straight, because they played Seattle and... The Lions, neither team ever throws their tight ends. And then last week, they should have given up a touchdown. Brait dropped it. So they've sort of been getting better against tight ends, but I don't think they really are any better against tight ends. I'll go, I'll take a shot at Burton one here. Mm, we already talked about it. That's real bold considering he's had under a point in three straight games. <laughs> and we'll go, uh, I could see Vance McDonald. I mean, you have him in a good matchup because he's in a good matchup. But It's good Vance McDonald. But with, with Connor not being there, if the running game doesn't go well, mm-hmm. they're going to have to throw more. It's a tight end, Jalen Samuels. Well, 
Game yeah, I don't changer. think that'll affect how he gets thrown to. Game but, changer. But uh, I'm he's basically their third receiving option, right behind Juju and, and mm-hmm. Brown. So if the running game doesn't go well, a lot of Justin Hunter last week. I could see. I could see. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'll put Vance number one. All right. I'll put McDonald one. I still feel like Burton. Burton get his TD. Yeah. And Joku. I think and Joku's one. Then Vance and Burton. Gates is total touchdown or bust. It's a great matchup, but that's. I mean, that's all he is, except when he played Denver and was all pissed off that one game for some reason. And Arnold, I only put on there because he has overtaken uh, Ben Watson as their primary receiving tight end. Now, that hasn't amounted to much, but he's kind of an interesting dude just because he's kind of more of a wide receiver than tight end. And in this matchup, I, you know, no one's going to start him. I get it. Maybe in DFS, but he's just he's one of those randos that we'll see pop up. And, you, you know, you'll be mad if you have Michael Thomas and he doesn't score and Dan Arnold gets two because right. that's what the Saints do, But just sort of a name to watch. The bad matchups, Cameron Brait against New Orleans. Evan Ingram, I don't even know who's going to play, but he hasn't done anything and they play Washington. And then Kyle Rudolph, who lulled us into thinking, you know, had a good game two weeks ago, had a great matchup last week, three targets, 38 yards. Now he's at Seattle. He shouldn't, but he's still a name. Right. And I think sometimes people... Only guy out of these three, I'd still consider Bray. I would too, just because even though the match, I feel this way about running backs against New Orleans. They've been top five all year in limiting running back fantasy points, but I'm always like, you know, teams can move the ball against them. And yeah, that's all I say. I think Ingram at this point is a lost season. Yeah, and Rudolph, whatever. Right, if he's your best option, sure. But I mean, but. a lot of people would say that about Burton too. He's a name, but he's on z- zero. He hasn't. Un- I mean, he's got some touchdowns. No, but in mean, the last three weeks, it's oh, legit yeah. been less than a point yeah. three straight games. Like that's they've also had Chase Daniel as their quarterback for two of them or all three. <sighs> two, but two. he's good. He's not good. He went to Mizzou. He single handedly lost that game against the Giants. Single handedly lose the game. He single handedly. Yeah. Through defense, what they give up like. 20 points to the Giants? What was the final in that game? Uh, 20. They won by a field goal in overtime, right? Right. 27 24, 30 27. I don't know. I mean, Something obviously, like he threw the pick six, but you can't you can't give up. If you're the Bears defense, mm-hmm. the vaunted Bears defense, mm-hmm. you can't be giving up that many points to the Giants. Chase Daniel did his job. If anything, he won them. Are you being serious that right game. now? He's a great quarterback. All right. He's definitely not being <laughs> serious. He was really bad. Yeah, he wasn't good. But, hey, has this got Kelly Bryant now? I, I well, know you, you know, heard. I was going to ask you about that. But here's the thing about I, – I, listen, I know nothing about Mizzou football. <laughs> what? But the last couple of years, has quarterback really been their problem? Well, I feel like they've had Drew some Locke's super overrated, but no, it hasn't. Right. So, like, because I saw that last night on the bottom line or whatever day that was, and I was like, oh, Matt will be happy. Yeah. It's like – but they've had quarterbacks, so does that do anything? But Kelly Bryant's cool, though. Yeah, no, he's definitely cool. Bring something to the table with that. Super cool. It is a big get, though. Like, that's the thing. Mizzou normally doesn't get a guy like that. Right, but it, that Matty Mock guy was pretty good. Well, Drew no. Locke. Matty Mock could run around, but he wasn't a yeah. good yeah. passer. Well. But anyway, all right. That's it for the this Zoo week. football talk on the Fantasy Football Podcast. That's hot. Get it here. That's what the people want. All right. So a couple random things from last week. Your theory of Jared Cook can't have back-to-back. He's had like three in a row. All right. A couple things I'm going to say here. One, it's about time. Okay. Two, the, gonna, the reason he had three good games is because he had three TDs. He doesn't have the yards right? in all those games. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. have the yards in all those games. Yeah, and he had three TDs. It also took like every receiver on on the Raiders being like hurt and out. That's not true. Who well, was out? Well, I mean, Amari Cooper got traded. That was like a, two months ago. Uh, Martavius Bryant got hurt. Okay. He was doing a lot. Jordy Nelson is dead. Yeah, he stinks. Okay. So who else are you going to throw to but Jared Cook? Marcel Aitman. Yeah. He's exactly. coming on. Yeah, he's a good red zone target. He's big. Whatever. Jared Cook can have he's all the great dude. games he wants. Don't care. Marcel Aitman's going to be the kind of dude who's playing for fantasy teams in Week 16 yeah. and has Maybe. 100 and a touchdown. Next year, where are you ranking Jared Cook as a tight end preseason? Uh-oh. I don't know. 10? Yeah. So whatever. I don't know off the top of my head. Whatever. Yeah. I don't care about him anymore. <laughs> All right, but just he proved Fine. you wrong. He proved me wrong because he could have, as an NFL player, mm-hmm. with his athleticism and his talent, that he could have three good games in a row. Wow. Right. Here's to you, Jared Cook. All right. We're expected to come here and have five good days in a row right. every week. 
Is that right? <laughs> right, and we do it. I've ne- no, I've never <laughs> done it. I've never had five in a row. All right. I had 14 good podcasts in a row. Mm. <laughs> All right, who's a bigger pansy Okay. from last week? Odell Beckham Jr. Okay. and his little swipe at an onside okay. kick, or Cam Newton being Whoa. taken out. Well, let's do Cam first. For a 50-yard, 50 50-yard. 50 Where did that bear. come from? Does he, is he nursing a shoulder, shoulder injury yeah. somewhere? He's got a bum shoulder. That apparently. he can play all game with and can't throw 50 yards? Well, he didn't look good in the game. He was under throwing guys left and right. Did he ask Four out picks. or they just was that known before the game he's coming out? It's a good question. I'd like to know. But, yeah, you bring in, what's his name? Taylor Heineke? Yeah, a person I've never heard of. Is he? Yeah, he should be a junior. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, because we made fun of Andrew Luck earlier in the year for right. similar, and I think that was like 60. Right. It was a little longer right. than 50. But maybe that's what turned Luck's season around. Maybe. A little, fi- shame. A little fire under his, shame under his by us behind. For not being able to throw so up. So now maybe this will turn, turn Cam on I for the last so. few weeks. And I loved his outfit after the game. Did mm. you see that? I didn't. He's always got a great he had, one. He had, like the, he had like the suit the suit coat with no shirt underneath. Oh, jeez. And then like the, the chain. Is it weirder to dress like that? Like when you lose four straight, absolutely. Like, don't you feel like you should wear something? Oh, you gotta. You should wear, have two outfits, right? Yeah, and you should be comedy. And be like, we're gonna win, right? And we're gonna lose. You should have. You should have Dockers and a Van Heusen if you lose. <laughs> Just go. Is that why Stafford sponsors yeah. Van Heusen? That's right. <laughs> it's his loser clothes. Right. You should be wearing Dockers and a Van Heusen with no hat. You don't get to dress like and Cam Newton have, dresses post game if you no. don't win. And he had like the super tall. Of course he did. Like I don't know if I don't think it's technically a fedora, but it's like that. But it's like really tall. Right. And then the band around it matched. It was either the piping on his lapel or or a or a you know what what do they call it? Um, like the accent piece in the pocket. The pocket square. Yeah, the pocket square. Sorry. And uh, it was like that. So it all you know it's all obviously same color hat, same color suit coat. It was all coordinated. And he's out there. and He's like, yeah, after he just threw four picks yeah. and had it's to like, be taken hey, out. Why don't you spend a little more time in the playbook? There it and is. A little less time at that. the store. I love that. <laughs> Maybe if this guy was practicing instead of picking out his outfit. All right, let's talk OBJ. Right. That was, you know, you can segue from Cam's business decision mm-hmm. in the playoffs oh. uh, a couple years ago. Or was right. that the Super Bowl? Was Super Bowl. That? Super Bowl, the old business decision going after the fumble um, with the OBJ thing. Here's the thing. If, it, like... If it's known that right. you don't, because I heard a lot of people after be like, he he's more important to them, right. you know, shouldn't have been out there. He should, he, he, you know, he's more important than them. he shouldn't have to go after that kick. Yeah, he shouldn't be out there. Right. You're telling me the difference that's on the coach then. in Sterling Shepard's hands mm-hmm. and OBJ's hands for cover one onside kick here and there. Well, was Shepard out there? I don't know. They usually have one of those guys right. though. But don't they have one? Do they do one on either side? Maybe now I don't know. But the like, they usually have blockers yeah. and like. Right. A catcher, basically. Right. Now, I don't know. Maybe Shepard was on the other side. But his hand, like, I'm sure Beckham has the best hands on the team. Sure. Great. But if he's not going to go after the ball, then he's pointless. Right. And here's the thing. I, other people have made this point. I agree with it. If that was the playoffs or the Super Bowl or a game that mattered, I think he goes after it. Sure. Can't say that for sure, but right. I think he does. In that game... Whatever, man. Right. But still, but then don't, then don't put save him out there. Save him for himself. Then what right. about, and now I'm sure these guys are out there blocking and stuff because they have hands too, but like, I feel like tight ends, like your best tight end yeah. should be that guy. Right. Because he's got some size to take a hit and he should have good hands. And that should be Rhett Ellison. Why not? Yeah. Evan no. Ingram ain't doing anything else this year. Mm-hmm. He can't be on the hands. He was an active, He's probably out still, there. They should have kept him active. And then one that. other thing I saw after, after the game or like this week, the hot takes on Beckham being their quarterback. Well, like that's not I mean, completely serious, but like that's yeah, asinine. Like it's ridiculous because right. he threw a trick play. Two. He's thrown two now right. this year. A right. trick play forty five yarder. And yeah. it's like he should be quarterback. Yeah. Even if he was then he wouldn't be able to throw it himself. Right. So well no well, and how my, do these shows do that stuff? Well I don't know. But I I will say this for Beckham. Like I I I, I don't like what he did. You know, the not going after it. I mean I like to think, hey you're a professional, you have one of the biggest contracts in the game at least non-quarterbacks, go get the ball. But I also, I get it. And like I said, I think if it was a big game, he would have. But it, my problem with it was after the game when he was like, I didn't do anything. Mm. I, or I didn't do anything wrong. How can you dare question me? Yeah. Well, no, be honest. You know, right. I guess you can't be honest, though. You right. can't be like, yeah, I wasn't getting in there. Right. Good Lord. I might get hit. 
I guess you can't be honest. It, again, you're right. Like he shouldn't have been out there in the first place. Yeah. He was put in this spot, but I still just it's like, man, you got it's on tape, yeah. bro. Yeah. We know you didn't go after it. And then he said something weird where he's like he did that move where when people who don't know what they're talking about or don't know what words mean started to say he's like, You can question me as a man, but you can't question my heart. It's like, isn't that the same thing? Yeah. I think it's kind of the same thing. Whatever. I, I still think the Giants are, are we, like, they've got two of the most exciting players in the league now. Yeah. Him and Barkley. Eli and, oh, right. Barkley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, uh, yeah, it's still. But Eli, man. Eli. God, that, that courtroom SNL sketch. <laughs> I can't be mad at him, no matter what he well, does. Well, I have a few. I have a couple reasons to be mad at him. I but, bet you do, but the, the you got to S- admit, that kind of makes SNL up for it. The SNL skin makes up for it, for sure. Cool. Uh, cool. Cool. You up? You up? You out? <laughs> Who dis? <laughs> All right. That's it for this week. Good luck to everyone in their fantasy playoffs. If you need any more fantasy information, even though I'm out and I'm bitter and don't care, I'm still... How many more of these we got? Too many, my friend. Two T-W-O more? T-W-O many. Two, two more. That's right. So go to sportnews.com slash fantasy where we'll hook you up. Everything you need to know from rankings to sleepers to bust to every DFS thing you could possibly imagine. Injury updates, weather update, which you're not really going to need because we already know the weather. Check that Chicago forecast. Blizzard in Buffalo. <laughs> cold and windy in Chicago. Rainy in Tampa. Rainy in Tampa. It's December. We don't even need to look. We know what's happening. So for Eric Ferreira, I'm Malatuski. And until next time.